to the back. Senator Rustin. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy Chair. Um, I rise tonight um, to make some comments about the South Australian election that was held last Saturday and, um, and to advise this House um, that we had an extraordinary situation where 53 per cent of South Australians voted for a Liberal government. And despite that fact, it appears as if it's highly unlikely that Liberal government will be able, a Liberal Party will be able to form government. Um, and you know, if you look at any other jurisdiction around Australia, whether it be any of the other states, and, and even Tasmania, who have got a, a more complicated and, and uh, type of election system, um, and, and, and the federal situation, any party that got 53 per cent of the vote would have to reasonably expect that they should be not just in government, but in government by a reasonably significant majority. So the question has to be, there, there must be something fundamentally flawed in the way the South Australian electoral um, system is working for this situation to have occurred. Because, I, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President, as you would be well aware, given that you come from South Australia yourself, that three out of the last four elections the Liberal Party has succeeded in achieving more uh, than 50 per cent of the two-party preferred vote. And uh, in, the, in all of those three occasions, we've actually failed to achieve government. And I think, you know, if, if these sorts of things happen once, um, and then they're rectified, because uh, obviously, the, you know, you can't help you know, changes with people um, moving between electorates, etc. If it had happened once, you could suggest that uh, that maybe um, that that was uh, that was just a, um, a an, an anomaly in this in the system that should have been fixed at the time. But for it to have happened so regularly over the last 16 years seems to me like there is a fundamental flaw that's been failing to, to actually be addressed. And given if we're talking 53 per cent of the people, you'd have to say the people have spoken to the South Australian, the South Australian people have spoken, and they've said that they didn't want a continuation of the Labor government that they've had for the last 12 years. And, um, you know, I, I think back to the point of, of what are we going to do about this? We we proudly stand here in Australia and say that one vote has has one value, but if we can continue to have this situation where the majority of people are supporting um, a particular party and they continually fail to achieve government, then maybe we need to be looking at how we change our boundaries in South Australia. And, uh, and, and our regular updating from the, South Australia, the Electoral Commission of South Australia and how they are actually going to address this problem this time, because um, this uh, exact same situation happened in 2010 uh, when the Liberal Party got 51.8 per cent of the vote and fell 18 seats to 26 seats, so we felt that the, the Liberal Party actually fell Order. Uh, Twenty. So we, we actually ended up falling six seats short of being able to form government, despite the fact not not just a very close situation where you maybe had a seat or two here or there, but actually fell six seats short with 51.8 per cent of the vote. Now I think by anybody's reckoning that that is not a system that's particularly fair. Now I said in my, uh, my commencing remarks that uh, that it looked unlikely that the uh, that the Liberal Party in South Australia would form government. However, um, it's certainly too premature to be saying that they won't form government because we have got two independents who currently hold the balance of power. Because, uh, and uh, Those two independents, uh, the member for Frome and the member for Fisher, um, both of them actually um, reside in reasonably conservative electorates. And given the, uh, the interests of their electors and the views of their electors, and you had to read this morning's uh, advertiser to realise that, uh, and the poll that they did in the two electorates to find out what uh, what the voters of those electorates wanted their members to do. It was quite overwhelming that they wanted them to support the establishment of a Liberal government in South Australia. So we're actually going to have a situation here if we aren't able to form government in South Australia, where the majority of the people of South Australia have spoken on Saturday. And it appears from a survey in the two independent seats that the majority of people in their seats have spoken and suggested that the, and, and indicated that they wanted a conservative government to, to form in South Australia. Both of the uh, independents um, obviously are very sensible men, and I'm sure that they will be listening to reason, and we can only hope, particularly in the case of Mr Brock, who resides in a regional electorate. And we all know that uh, many of the issues um, that confront South Australia at the moment are in our regional areas. 
And, uh, and Mr Brock has the wonderful opportunity here, if he forms government with the Liberal Party, to be able to deliver some outcomes for rural and regional um, South Australia in areas like the infrastructure that has been so sadly um, lacking. In, um, you know, our roads are unbelievable. You know, we're, we're seeing a situation in South Australia where the current or the, the previous government and uh, the Labor Party, the Labor government, um, trying to lower speed limits simply because they hadn't spent enough money on road maintenance, so, that you, they, so the roads have become unsafe. So their answer to that is, don't fix the roads up so that they're good and safe for people to drive on. We'll just reduce the speed limit. I mean, that begs the question of where, if we don't start doing something now, we're going to all be driving around at 20 kilometres an hour soon if they don't do something about it. And it's also interesting to note that the extraordinary majority of people in country seats voted for the Liberal Party. Uh, in the seat in which I, uh, I live, uh, Chafee, which uh, includes uh, much of the River Murray and the Riverland area of South Australia, um, many of our booths were voting in excess of 80, 80 to 85 per cent for the Liberal Party. I mean, it's such an overwhelming um, endorsement for what the people in South Australia, particularly the rural and regional areas, are requesting of their government. They're saying it's time that we had a government that didn't forget about us. It's time we had a government that actually recognised that South Australia's boundaries exceed past uh, the metropolitan area and that those people that live in rural and regional areas count just as much. But I, uh, I, before I finish, I'd like to take the opportunity to, uh, to congratulate um, David Spears, who has, uh, appears to have been elected as the new member for Bright, to Vincent Tazia, who appears to have been elected for the new member for Hartley, to Troy Bell, who appears to have been elected as the new member for Mount Gambier, and, uh, and it appears uh, quite likely that Corey Wingard um, will be elected as the member for Mitchell. I'd also like to congratulate Andrew McLaughlin, who has uh, um, been uh, elected to the Legislative Council. But um, in, uh, in conclusion, uh, can we also um, congratulate the, uh, the Tasmanian um, uh, Tasmanian Liberal Party for an overwhelming result in Tasmania. And as I, I said earlier, given the extraordinary um, situation in Tasmania with the, the electoral system that um, I don't think anybody, <laughs> anybody really understands, um, that uh, yeah, it was a, a fantastic result for the, the Liberal Party and a terrible result for the, uh, <laughs> for the Greens. Um, but uh, as I said, the, the most important thing that I think that we need to learn a lesson from Saturday, from the South Australian election, is that if we really want to have integrity retained in our electoral system and we want to have people be able to have comfort and believe that our electoral system is fair and unbiased and that when they go to the polls that the majority of people are going to be listened to, we need to do something to change the way we vote in South Australia and, uh, and to make sure that uh, no South Australian feels that they have been that their vote hasn't mattered, uh, their vote hasn't counted, or despite the fact that the wishes of the majority of the people have been loudly um, broadcast around the whole of the state, the fact that we can end up with a situation where, as I said, it is possibly quite likely that a government will be formed in South Australia that does not represent the wishes of the majority of South Australians. Thank you, Senator Russell.